By the end of this video, you will probably learn 95% of concepts that you need to master the topic of data cleaning. I think we can all agree that data cleaning is not the sexiest part of uh, working with data, but if you are a data analyst, if you are a data scientist, a data engineer, even a business analyst, you need to master data cleaning. If you don't know how to spot irregularities in your data, if you don't know how to clean the data, well, I can tell you in advance that the result of your work will be pretty bad. And by the way, if any of this sounds interesting to you, and if you think that I can be the one helping you to land a job in data analytics, make sure to check out my new Analytics and Automation Academy. This is a six weeks program where we're going to work on a one to one basis together so that we make sure that you reach your goal in the fastest way possible. If you're interested, you can check the link in the video description. But for now, let's get straight into understanding how a proper data cleaning process works. A little spoiler here. So we are also going to revise some SQL and Python concepts to really uh, put into practice the data cleaning process. But for now, let's not overcomplicate it. There is a kind of a simple uh, diagram that can explain and summarize the whole data cleaning process. So the start of the data cleaning process is obviously trying to identify the leak. That, so that would be our step number one. Then obviously, once we identify what's uh, wrong in our data, we have to fix it. So that would be our step two. The step three, actually super important, and we don't have to forget about it, is actually to monitor and repeat step one and two. So we have to go back to step one. Let's uh, again put this into practice and let's start with the step number one, which which is identify the leak. So the very important thing that I need to clarify at the start to identify the leak, identify what's wrong in the data is that I cannot give you a single SQL query or Python code to actually identify what's wrong with your data, because that really depends on the data that you are dealing with. But in general, we can group the irregularities in the data into different buckets. And so to identify the leak, identify uh, if there is any wrong data. So first of all, we can scan for gaps. And so do we notice rows or entire uh, columns with no data? So that's uh, that can be a first uh, very simple step. And so here, uh, I have a very simple SQL query that you can use. So for example, here we are checking for rows with the null values in the product name. So we do a simple select all. So we select all the data from uh, our table and we add the condition where the product name is null. With this query, if this query gives us result, then we immediately see uh, some irregularities and gaps in the data. Another uh, thing that we can check to identify the leak, identify um, data quality issues in our data is to assess data distribution. So we can use obviously visualization tools or SQL queries to highlight outliers and evaluate distribution to find the predominant groups uh, within our data. And so here, again, another very simple query, we can select like the age, the count star, so we select all the uh, count of rows for a specific age, uh, for a specific age, because we group by age. And so in this way, we check the distribution of values. Then let's go on to something else that we can use to detect irregularities in the data. So maybe we uh, want to check if there is any nonsensical data. So for example, uh, the gender equal to 1985, obviously, that's something that doesn't make sense or the postal code which is like letters, so A, B, C, D. Again, this is kind of a flags in our data. And so something that we can do using SQL, for example, is to check for entries in the gender column. So we select all the data from our table where the gender is not in, and we select basically male and female. And so the result of this query will be all the rows where the gender is not male and female. And we can check actually, because we are selecting star, we're selecting everything, we can check what's uh, happening exactly in those rows. Another thing that we can do is to check for uniformity uh, in the data. So maybe we have discrepancies such as uppercase product A in uh, one instance and lowercase product A in another. Uh, so obviously, we want to flag uh, this example as well. And so if we want to check for uniformities or uh, inconsistency, then these are SQL queries that we can use, for example, so select this team product name from our table. And here I want to check if the product name is lowercase, so I'm going to do lower product name, or actually uppercase product name. So this is a practical example to check for uniformity. And so if all these steps are clear, we can do this as part of our exploratory data analysis that we can move into the step two, which is actually fixing the leak, fixing the stuff that is not working in our data. And so here we can be a bit more precise with our potential solutions for the data quality issues. So we can actually group all the irregularities that we have in the data 
data into subgroups. And so the first subgroup would be missing data. And so the first thing that we have to notice is that missing data can present itself in different forms. So sometimes we have zeros, sometimes we have blank fields, sometimes we have something like not specified or NA, not available or none or null or actually infinity. Or maybe some programmers or other people in the team, they put placeholder values, like for example, uh, default at email.com. And so yeah, we have to make sure that we are aware of all these possible values for missing data. Then once we identify missing data as well, these strategies are probably three strategies to uh, deal with missing data. So first of all, obviously is to eliminate the rows and columns where we have absent values. And so again, super simple SQL query here is uh, dropping rows where the product review is known. So we do a delete from your table where the product review is known. And that's, uh, that's give us the final result. Or if I zoom out, I can transform apps and data. So again, let's go into like straight into a simple SQL query. So we can alter the table, our table, and we can add the purchase recently column. And this column purchase recently will be based on last purchase date. And so we update our table and we set these uh, new columns. So the purchase recently with a case statement. So when the last purchase date is null, then we set this column value as zero, else we put it as a one and we end the case statement. And so in this case, we didn't edit the original column. So the last purchase date, but we just added a kind of a flag in our data to um, filter those values. Then again, if I zoom out, uh, another way to deal with uh, missing values is to estimate the absent values. So there are different techniques, but you know, we can fill up those missing data with a value that we think is appropriate. And so one way to do this, for example, is using the average. And so in this example here, let's say that we have uh, this temperature column that sometimes is null, and we want to fill up those null values with the average of the whole data set. So whenever uh, we actually have values. And so we do an update and you put your table name, we do the set the temperature column. How do we set the temperature? We do a select average temperature from the same table where the temperature is not null. We calculate the average of the temperature when we actually have values and we set basically this average to uh, that specific column temperature when the temperature is null. And so if this is clear, uh, we dealt with uh, uh, missing values, missing data, and then now we can go into the next categories of, let's say, data quality issues, which could be outliers. So you may know that outliers are extreme values that can be you know, exceptionally high or exceptionally low. So for example, a desert sensor recording a temperature of minus 30 degrees, or maybe a shopper spending $0.05 annually. And so again, how do we deal with the outliers the, with this specific case of data quality issue? The first thing is to probably exclude outliers. And so we can use percentiles to exclude them. So we can remove rows where purchase amount is in the top or bottom 1%. And so again, we do a simple SQL query, delete from your table, where the purchase amount is higher than the 99% percentile or actually bottom 1% in the percentile count 0.01. The other option that we have is to partition the data. And so we can segregate standard entries from the outliers. And so in this SQL query, for example, we can create a new column and we call it the segment, which is based on the purchase amount. And so here we add the segment column as a varchar column and we set the segment and we use a case statement. So when the purchase amount is higher than some threshold that we define, then we call the segment outlier. Otherwise, we call it standard. The other way to deal with uh, outliers is to actually retain outliers, but obviously using some analysis techniques to deal with those. And so, for example, if we have to calculate an average, but we know that we have outliers in a specific column. And so, for example, we can select the average of the purchase amount from a subset of our data that we define by excluding the 5% top and bottom. And that's what we call the trim data. Okay, so hopefully this was very practical practical for you to uh, really see how to deal with uh, outliers. And then now another example is um, actually dealing with the contaminated data. I have a, um, an example here. So let's say that you are baking a cake and you are mistakenly adding salt instead of sugar. So obviously your cake will definitely taste different uh, to what you expected. This is an, an analogy of dealing with the contaminated data because the thing is that contaminated data is uh, a bit tricky to spot because you really need domain expertise. So obviously 
obviously in this case we are talking about a cooking example super simple um, obviously it's uh, kind of uh, uh, straightforward if you put salt or sugar but in a potential business case and again I'm going to show you a very simple example here we can deal with some retail data so we have the product ID we have the product name the price and the category and let's say that I'm very familiar with our shop I'm very familiar with uh, what we sell uh, let's say they have this uh, gold necklace that is priced as uh, $12 here if I'm a retail maybe store manager I maybe know exactly that there is uh, no chance I'm going to sell a gold necklace for 12 pounds maybe there was a mistake here and there is a zero missing so maybe uh, I could have gone for $120 in the shop and so this is a practical example of uh, contaminated data I need domain knowledge domain expertise in this case I'm the retail manager and so I know exactly what we're dealing with and so this is a way for me to spot uh, contaminated data another example of uh, data that has poor quality is uh, when we deal with inconsistent data so I'm gonna go straight into the example here so the example could be the date format that we are dealing with in our data and so you may be familiar that every single location in the world they have a different date format is something that I spot so many times in uh, data that I work with and so for example the European branches can have data in the format of day month and year but then if you deal with American branches you will have month date and year and so in this specific example if you were to analyze this data without accounting for the inconsistency you might mistakenly interpret sales from January 2nd as sales from February 1st and obviously this will lead to incorrect insights about monthly sales trends if that's what you're analyzing now let's jump into a different category of uh, data quality issues something that you uh, may heard of is duplicate data again something super super common whenever you analyze with data and here I can give you again three strategies to deal with duplicate data so the first one is to identify and retain only one of the identical records discarding the rest and so this is actually something that I do in the, this super simple SQL query I'm going to just do select this thing star so I'm selecting all the rows from the table but only the ones that are unique and distinct from each other's another way to deal with uh, duplicates is to match records in pairs for example you may want to retain the only the latest entry that you have in your data set or you can actually group records into clusters so you can put duplicates together so that you consolidate all related information for example uh, you can collate all the data linked to a customer named Mario Rossi I'm Italian so that's the easiest name example that I can think of okay so if this is again uh, clear we can go to actually another type of data quality issues and uh, something that we have to deal with in our data cleaning process which is uh, data type challenges and so here the type of issues in our data is really dependent on the data type in question so it can be uh, date time objects or strings and so uh, this would be text or even a specific format for numbers and so for example if we start with uh, string issues strings are usually the messiest part of data the easiest thing that we can think of is the case uniformity so sometimes we have a lower case sometimes we have upper case and that's important to spot in our data and so this is actually a python code so not uh, sql anymore i also want to uh, give you an example from python in here i'm selecting from our data frame i'm selecting a specific column and then I basically say okay let's change that specific column putting everything on lowercase then another thing that I can do is the white space management so a lot of times we have a string a, a piece of text with maybe there is some unnecessary spaces or new lines and so again in Python it's easy uh, again I can uh, change my uh, column name using strip and here obviously we can go a bit more advanced level if you um, are dealing with the natural language processing for example so we have things like stop words removal one hot encoding uh, typo corrections encoding standardization so yeah these are kind of uh, more advanced things if you really work uh, in an, an advanced mode with text but obviously things that you need to be aware of then if I scroll down then uh, a lot of times you uh, deal with the uh, date and times so again dealing with the uh, date and time can be super super tricky sometimes and so well here the immediate things to do is to ensure dates are in date type format so again we are talking about Python here there is a way for example here I'm using pan a uh, common libraries for uh, data analysis in Python and here I'm just saying okay the date column a specific date column that I have in my data frame let's bring it to a date time format something else that I can do is the time zone consideration so again we have to be aware that we may have different time zones for our date and so if our time zones are not crucial if we don't want to uh, keep different time zones in our data set probably we can standardize to a single one and so again this is a Python code that you can use to convert 
all the uh, dates in your uh, data frame into a specific time zone. Okay, so hopefully this whole step that we've seen here, how to uh, fix the leak, how to fix our data quality issues, gives you a very clear understanding of the different types of data quality issues that we may encounter in our data and how to fix it in a practical way using SQL and also Python. Now, the last step that I wanted to show you that I mentioned at the uh, start is actually the step three, which is monitor and repeat. Super, super important to take care of this because obviously we can do a lot of stuff to clean our data, but there are ways also to automate this data cleaning process also to automate that, you know, once we spot irregularities in the data, instead of us repeating the same process, we have a way to do it automatically. And so a couple of tools and strategies to do it is obviously trying to um, automate data quality checks with uh, some tools like SQL scripts, so dbt test or Python scripts. And the goal here is to define some data quality rules and schedule recurring checks to catch, for example, missing, duplicate or invalid data. And here an example from my day to day as a data analytics lead, I use dbt test specifically. So I define the checks that I want to do in a specific table because I know that, for example, a table may be super important and I don't want duplicates. And so I set my dbt test. The dbt test is connected to my Slack. And so every morning, because we refresh our data uh, during the night, every morning, if there is some checks that failed, I will receive a Slack message. And so, you know, I switch on my laptop in the morning. I see if there are any inconsistency in the data. If I receive that Slack message, I know that I need to go back to my data, do some checks, repair the data. And that's the way that I ensure that my dashboards and my analytics are not impacted afterwards. Obviously, the other way to do these uh, data quality checks, if you're not able to automate them, is basically to monitor your dashboards. You probably have some dashboards live once you perform your data analytics. And so uh, with visual dashboards, you can track metrics, spot trends, and identify anomalies. It is obviously very easy if you are confident with your data to spot these uh, inconsistencies. And so here tools are Power BI, Tableau, or Looker as the main data visualization tools. And there you have it, a simple framework that you can follow to really master the data cleaning process. As always, if you learn at least one new thing in this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I can help you even further in the next videos. And make sure to check out my new Analytics and Automation Academy if you think that I can be helpful to you in your journey to land a job in data analytics. Applications are now officially open and you can apply from the link that you see in the video description. If the application is successful, we can jump together on a call where I can tell you more and more information about the Academy. I will also leave here a link to another video that the YouTube algorithm thinks that might be interesting to you. And well, enjoy the rest of your day. Ciao for now and see you in the next one.